And welcome back, guys, to another exciting episode of Starlight Vega. I was almost to say Stardew Valley. <laughs> I don't know why. I guess it's just like it's got the same, uh, uh, I guess the same uh, number of, uh, oh gosh, I've forgotten the name. Syllables. There we go. That's the word I was looking for. It's got the same number of syllables. But anyway, in the last part, we decided to decline uh, Lyra's offer to sleep with us, even though she seems pretty mad at us, and I guess we are facing the repercussions of that now. For once, I am the first to arrive in class. I tap impatiently on my desk, waiting for Melody. My mood is sour. For one, those notes went missing, and two, I haven't seen Lyria all morning. Was she mad at me for not letting her sleep in my room? Putting my face into my hands, I try to rub some of the sleepiness out of my eyes. Yet another weird dream last night. Something about them bothers me. I can't figure out what. All right, class, settle down. I'll be taking attendance now. Class has completely filled in by now. The clock ticks by as the teacher calls out names one by one. Melody still isn't here? Melody? Melody? Has anyone seen Miss uh, Rococo? Melody Rococo. Interesting. I guess that's the first time we've actually heard her last name. I think. Anyway. I saw her walking to school this morning. Hmm. Unusual for her to be late. She was walking to school this morning? The only thing that she takes more seriously than school is the chance to get away from her mother. The minutes go by as I start to worry. Did something happen? Did Lyria do something to her? Ka-thunk, ka-thunk. Huh? Sid flutters outside the window, hitting against it in a frantic manner. I unlatch the pane and pull it aside. Oh, okay, all right. Uh, confirmed, main character sits near the window. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I bet you we're in the back of the class too. Or we've hit, we've hit anime cliche 402, I think. I can't remember. I'm fairly sure. Actually, shouldn't it be higher than that? Or like, yeah, no, higher in this card of sense. It's Melody. She's stuck. What are you talking about? Stuck where? Hurry, hurry, free. Is there a problem, Miss Reed? Um, um, I've got to go to the bathroom. You couldn't go before class started. All right, you're excused. I've got to hurry. Melody is in trouble. She's over here. Where? I look around the area, but I can't find any signs of Melody. Where is she? On the book. Huh? We were trying the teleportation spell before school, but it turned out to be the wrong one. She got transported into the book. What? I can't go into the book without feeling serious repercussions. You'll have to go inside it yourself and tell her the counterspell. How do I do that? I can't read the book, so you just have to tell me what it says. I'll think of a counterspell based on that. R right. I've got to do what I can to get Melody out of there. I pick up the book. <sighs> what the hell is all this stuff? It's a bunch of triangles and weird squiggly lines. What's the matter? Melody got trapped in the book. Hmm, that's what you get for lugging around that no good thing. You shouldn't have left her. Let her have it. That's besides the point. This isn't good. Books like this are ten are tend to contain really powerful magic. It can manifest into a real nightmare if someone gets trapped inside one. Well, do we ha how do we get her out? Hmm. This really isn't my area of expertise. This can't be happening. Oh, oh, what, what, what? Ore, ore, nani, nani, na, nani? Okay. Oh, it worked. M Melody, Melody, are you okay? I'm fine. I've been trapped in here since this morning. Isn't this the study in my house? This is the study as it was meant to be seen, or, well, a memory of it anyway. Now that I look around, it does seem a bit different. The bookshelf is no longer destroyed. I'm glad you're okay. You had me totally freaking out. Were you doing magic before school? 
It's my mother. She's making it impossible to do anything. I was so excited when I got out of the house that I couldn't wait to try some spells. I had to have Sid translate the book's transcribed pages by flashlight last night. Oh, that's a pretty neat idea. I guess ancient spell books are no match for general curiosity. This place feels completely real. Even the dust and sunlight appear is correct. Wait a minute. Does that mean we can see the rest of the house? No, not quite. She loosens the latch on the window and swings it open. Come, see. I look outside. You can see a few trees, but beyond that, it's hazy white space, far as the eye can see. Guess he didn't have that great of a memory. Yes, it seems most people only remember the important details, or small, pleasant things like the breeze. She's right. I can feel a light breeze picking up my hair. It seems to be coming from nowhere, though. I look around. There's some pretty weird things on the shelves. What's this? Some, some sort of notched crystal ball? That's a wisher. Just think, think of something and it shows up. The book says it was used to extort knowledge from traitors, but I think it's nicer this way. Hmm, interesting. <laughs> Gosh, Melody has been like going deep into this book. I mean, or in Sid, I guess, <laughs> in this case. But, I mean, they are trying to separate her from Lyria, so... A, you know, best friend trying to do good by you. I think that's very noble. I pick up some sort of bracelet with a heart-shaped red stone. It's quite pretty. That's a lovely bracelet. It shows the true colors of the ones you give it to, whether they love you or not. Huh, that might be useful. Yes, shame you can't actually take anything out of here with you. This place is just a memory. Who would use it on? Who, who would you use it on? N no one in particular. A anyway, I'm glad you're here. I like Sid, but it's pretty obvious he's spying on me. In lore, demons always have an ulterior motive, and they'll have to do whatever it takes to achieve it. Malicious spirits are one thing, but demons are always portrayed as tricky and manipulative. And I've been manipulated? But to what purpose? I'm sorry, Arya. You came here to help me, and all I've done is act strange. I'm worried about you, that's all. It's okay. You're right. I have no idea about Lyria or what she wants, and sometimes she dodges my questions. But it seems you've learned so much from the book in such a short time. You're really amazing. Actually, time goes by very slowly in here, or so the book tells me. I've been trapped almost a full day. Whoa. Okay. So, it's been a day in here, and she's been trapped since morning. So a day rougher is probably roughly around an hour in the real world? Give or take? We're gonna, we're gonna put, postulate that? I'll maybe have to remember that for later. Gosh, if that's the case, she's been trapped in the book. But imagine the crystal. Like, how long do you think uh, Lyria was trapped in that crystal? Like, how it felt for her? This whole time distortion thing always scares me. Like, alright, you take my soul and put it in a soul stone. But what if time is faster in the stone than it is in reality? Imagine watching yourself age. And then you go back to the real world and it's only been like an hour and a half. You know, like, you, you visibly feel, and you are in all intents and purposes uh older gosh it's such a it's such an interesting way to look at it um you're taking that pretty well i wasn't exactly bored but i could use another set of eyes we're supposed to be looking at a silver feather bookmark i've been looking through the books but it's so difficult to stop myself from reading them a silver feather bookmark huh I'm sure it's got to be somewhere in these. Ugh. Millions of books? <laughs> Phew. You've been at this for hours, but in books, time frame anyway, the clock in the present probably hasn't moved more than a few minutes. 
We're not having a lot of luck, though. Also, I guess since the book is in close proximity to, to Lyria at this point, it's not putting our life in jeopardy. I just have to, we have to sort of hope that that's the case, right? Is because the book houses the, the life stone that's in our bodies, it's technically not that far away. Even though it's in another dimension. <laughs> but I mean, it could be a parallel dimension, right? So it's like, it's moving at a congruent time. You know what? I'm probably thinking way too much into it. Just say, it's magic. And then we're, we can just continue on. We're not having any, uh, not having a lot of luck though. I hope Melody doesn't get hungry in here. I lean back on the desk. My hand slips, causing me to lose my balance. Thunk. Oof. Uh, a small blackened book fell out of the desk. Oh! Melody picks up the book, turning it over as she inspects it. Look at this! It's your grandfather's diary! What? Let's see here. Wow, this is really interesting. Whoa. Is there any mention of Lyria? Hmm, none that I can see, but it mentions Vega. It looks like your grandfather and grandmother both went there. This is crazy. I skim through it quickly. It looks like it's all true. Grandpa mentions grandma and taking her through a portal. Th this part, he just arrived in Vega. The forest here is chilly and loamy. Crystals, actually, yeah, might as well give him Deckard Cain's voice. The forest here is chilly and loamy. Crystals take the place of boulders, filling the landscape. She took my hand, exclaiming lightly, What a monumous occasion! A catastrophe of. It continues like this for several pages. Did he plan to write a novel or something? The book was more than I ever could have imagined. It brought both Lucinda and I closer, and it brought me to the King of Vega. He carries none of the initial fears of humans as the others do. All of Vega's creatures have fantastical features, such as horns and tails, but, it's his, but his are quite striking in spite of it. His crimson hair and golden eyes give off a dangerous appearance, despite his wide smile and mirthful laugh. Mirthful! Mirthful! His cloak long and langy... Languid. I never, actually, I've never actually heard of that word before. Uh, I'm gonna say languid. Uh, Gweed doesn't sound right, so languid against the fine velvet of his coat. Jeez, I wish he'd get to the point. All right, well, we have discerned at least a little bit there, Arya, is the fact that it sounds as if it could be Lyria's father, because he's got red hair and yellow eyes, just like Lyria. Oh, I so love how he writes. Of course she does. <laughs> uh. The king is very interested in the book. With it, he believes we'll be able to unite our two worlds. We make quite the team, with me transcribing the book due to being unaffected by the curse it has on demons and him translating. Uh, the pages are burnt too badly to read. <laughs> that was super weird. Did I, like, accidentally... Um, let's see, can I right-click? Okay, no, that just brings me to this. There's not a way to go back? Okay, it just... It just cuts to that. All right. <laughs> just making sure. Ugh, you can't really read what's on these. Let's skip ahead. I'm worried this book is not what it seems. The king seems to feel it too. I worry it is not a tool for rebirth, as initially expected, but something else altogether. The uh, rest is missing. <laughs> it's such a weird hard cut that it's like, Odd. <laughs> Plop. A small sliver bookmark falls out. Well, that is convenient, isn't it? <laughs> the bookmark, but the book, is that it? Yes, the remaining half of the book seems to be missing entirely. Let's look for the rest. 
I want to look too, but I'm not sure how much time has passed since we've been in here. I don't want anyone to worry. Uh, oh, but perhaps we can come back another time. Okay, let's get out of here. All right, hold the bookmark and... Whoa! What? Hey, what just happened? The Shermans are back! Aw, Sid cares. Sid's only known us for like a day and a half, but he cares. Hmm. Seems like only a few minutes have passed out here. On the plus side, I now have a useful place to study the book and do your do homework. I wouldn't be fooling around with that book, little girl. The next time you go, things might not be so pleasant. You're in over your head if you think your little trips inside are safe. Uh, I feel something soft in my hand. The bookmark. Whoa, I thought you weren't supposed to be able to take things out. Melody holds it like it's some precious artifact that might crumble if, she, if she's too rough. I suppose maybe it is. That one's special. It'll act like the book does and create a portal to that room, but only if you're in the study. It's the one thing the book will allow you to take out of it. How does she know all this? I'm a little worried and concerned. Like, obviously, her and Sid have been working on it throughout the night. She probably didn't get a lot of sleep knowing how Melody acts. But, man, she is awfully acutely aware of, like, specific things. Oh, first period should just, uh, should be just about over. Oh no, I missed a class? You're worried about that now. <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> this is such a weird thing. It like loads the school and then is like, nah, 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 we're in the forest. <laughs> I walk up the path leading to the cafeteria when the third period ends. After our, eventual mor our eventful morning, I wonder if Melody wants to eat outside today. My good mood comes screeching to a halt when I see a familiar red-haired girl. Ugh. What are you doing here? I drag her off to a secluded spot as she harumphs. I got worried. You suddenly just disappeared this morning. Then you were with that Melody girl. You spend so much time with that book brain. Oh, it's just no fun. What do you see in her? Cut it out. She's my friend. Of course I'm going to spend time with her. Don't play dumb. You know there's more to it than that. Brushing off her comment, I think back to Lyria's own behavior. That reminds me, where were you this morning? You weren't in the house when I woke up. She crosses her arms and leans against the tree, looking aloof. Around? Despite her attempts to be vague, I see a smile on her lips. Is she trying to play hard to get? I'm out of here. Stay out of sight, okay? What? Well, hey! She grabs onto my arm. Whoa! Ah, oh, jeez. You were having fun with Melody all day, and I was so bored. I just want to learn more about humans and you, Arya. Come, spend time with me, pretty please. I suppose it has been boring waiting out here, and she has been behaving, mostly. Spend lunch with Lyra, go meet Melody. Oh man, I have been brushing Lyra off. But, you know, I'm... I think the main goal here is to not have our soul connected to this demon lady. You know, like, and I don't know what her motive is. She hasn't been open. Like, if sleeping with me is how she thinks this is going to uh, change us, or maybe by sleeping with me, she'll be able to control me. Like, that's the, that's the crux of this. Uh, someone in the comments stated that I should, I should, you should believe her. Like, she may have really good intentions, but uh, the difference really here is, is we don't know anything about Lyria, like, at all. So it doesn't seem to me like a, like a good choice. So I'm going to pick Melody. I'm going to go see our friend. She, at least, is trying to fix the problem. Sorry, I promised Melody that I'd meet her. You'll just have to endure a little longer. Lyra shoots me a glare. I 
already said I would. The classrooms we're, we're meeting in never has other students, so you can probably c Lyria? Hey, Lyria, where'd she go? Oh well, too bad, so sad. Plus we get to spend time with Sid, yay. But anyway, we'll uh, do that next time. So take care guys, stay frosty, and uh, 